few weeks ago, I moved into a brand new studio space, this one. And I think I'm finally ready to give you a little tour. Hello and welcome back to Marcus Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. Now, a little while ago, earlier this year, I gave you a tour of my very first studio, which was, to all intents and purposes, my back bedroom. It's where I built this brand, it's where this channel started, it's where everything went absolutely nuts early this year in terms of views and subscribers, for which I'm eternally grateful and very humbled by. But I do have bigger ambitions for this channel, hence moving to this new space. And I think, although I've got lots and lots of stuff still to do, as you're about to find out, I think I've done enough to show you around. Now, I'm going to leave as many things in the description as I can in terms of the stuff that I'm going to show you today so you can go and check it out yourselves, but there's a lot to get through, so let's get on with it. Now, we'll start with the standing desk setup, which is just out of shot over there, and it features a rather lovely desk from a company called Flexispot. Now, I've featured Flexispot on this channel before, and I've been very lucky for them to send me a couple of desks to try out, and they are superb. I've put two of these together now, and they're really simple. I'll show you a very quick time-lapse video of how all the bits fit together, but trust me, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. I've never been that keen on standing desks, purely because in the past I've had kind of manual things that you have to wind up, and they're just not very solid. The rigidity for these Flexispot desks is fantastic. It's the one thing that really sells it for me. So whether you're sitting down or standing up, it's very, very solid. And it's just lovely material as well that they use. The top is lovely, the weight of the base and the metal they use for that is absolutely superb. And on the version I've got, you can have up to four or five, I think, different settings. You can have your standing and your sitting positions preset as well. Now they are running a Black Friday and Cyber Monday offer. I'm publishing this on Black Friday, so if you're quick enough, you can make the most of it. And you can actually save up to 50% off, so I'll put a link in the description so you go and check them out. But yeah, Flexispot, two of their desks now, and they're absolutely fantastic. Now on the desk, I have my great big 16-inch MacBook Pro. There's a long story behind that in terms of how it got to me, but it's here, and I've been using it now consistently for the last two or three weeks, and it is an absolute beast. Now I'm not gonna review that laptop in this video, that's not what this video is about, but it's now playing a central role in this studio. It's sitting on an IKEA monitor stand. I don't really think it matches the desk, I think there's a bit of an issue there. It's a bit of a temporary setup really, but I do like the fact that the MacBook is raised it just kind of works. Now I've also got on here an AirPods Max stand by a company called Banks. And I featured the original Banks AirPod Max stand months ago in an accessories roundup video, and it's been one of the most popular things I have recommended. People absolutely love it. I can see why. It looks lovely. It almost looks like Apple made it. It's it's that attractive and it's that well made as well. It uses really high quality components. Now this latest version of the Banks stand actually includes wireless charging, which is rather nice. It has a USB port around the back which you can plug into power and you can use that to charge your phone. It doesn't charge the AirPods Max, it's worth bearing that in mind, but if you're just looking for a very nice stand for these very expensive headphones, I absolutely recommend Banks over anything else. There's also normally this IKEA chair. Now, regular viewers will be familiar with this. I've sat on this chair for pretty much every video that I've put onto this channel, and it's made its way to the studio. And I've had this chair for over 10 years, I think. I get lots of people asking what it is. It's an Ikea Marcus, I think it's called, and it's been the best chair I've ever owned. I think when I bought it, it was about 150 pounds or something. It wasn't very expensive for a chair, and it's lasted so well. It's a little bit beat up here and there, but it's just so comfy, and it looks good. And like I say, people seem to, to like it on videos. So I don't know if, if IKEA still do this. If you've bought one recently, let us know in the comments. But if you can get one, they're fantastic. Now also on my standing desk, I have a MX Master 3 mouse from Logitech, which is the best mouse you can buy. I talked about this recently in another video, which I'll link to above, but it's just the most ergonomic, satisfying mouse to use, particularly if you're doing video editing. At the moment, I've just paired that with a Magic Keyboard from Apple. I will change that for a mechanical keyboard, of course, at some stage, but the Apple one gets things done. Now I won't show you the cable management because there isn't any at the moment. That is one thing I need to get sorted. So that standing desk really is where I do most of my work when I'm here. So if I'm video editing or working on email or working with clients and things, I tend to use that desk as my main desk. Now just to the left of that, I have what I've called the workbench. Not much work takes place on it, if I'm completely honest. But that desk is actually quite important to me because it's the first desk I used for this channel. And if we go right back to my earlier videos from earlier this year and last year, then you will have seen that desk thousands of times in B-roll. Again, it's from IKEA. You can spot a theme here. I'm not sponsored by IKEA, by the way. But it's a very nice, tough, heavy, top and two kind of trestle things beneath it. I've got some plans potentially to use it as top-down filming for B-roll, but we'll see. I'll update on that in due course. 
Now, just to my right out of shot, I have what I've recently called the backup station. Now, I've called it the backup station because it's literally mainly for backups, which makes me a little bit sad because it features the M1 Mac Mini. And it's the M1 Mac Mini that I've, I think, edited about 80 videos for this channel on. I've talked a lot about it, I've reviewed it several times, I've probably bored you rigid about it, but it's the most impressive desktop computer I've ever, ever put to work. But since the 16-inch MacBook Pro has come along, that has relegated the Mac Mini. And as it stands now, it's a kind of backup machine server type thing. So I have all my drives connected to it. I have some external drives. I use SSDs mainly for video editing these days. And I use SanDisk one terabyte Extreme Pros. They are very, very fast, very, very good. And to keep them backed up, I plug them into the Mac Mini when I'm not using them. And I have a backup drive on there, but I also have Backblaze. Backblaze is a fantastic service, pretty cheap actually as well. It's a cloud-based backup service. So basically, every Everything that goes onto that Mac Mini gets backed up to the cloud and gets backed up to an archive drive as well. But it doesn't do anything else, and it's attached to my massive 34-inch ultra-widescreen monitor. It's a bit of a luxury, really. Also a relic of this channel. It's something I'm never going to get rid of. That setup I think I'm just going to keep. Even if I end up framing it and putting it on the wall, I, it means an awful lot to me. So. Yeah, that's that's my beloved Mac Mini. On there, I've also got an AGB Tech Hub. The iFi Zen DAC, which I've talked about quite a bit on this channel, is there as well. That's a headphone amp slash DAC. There's also a Logitech Light Bar, which eagle-eyed viewers will have spotted quite regularly in the background of my old set. And it's pretty simply just a light bar that you put on top of your monitor, and it shines light down, not onto the screen, but down beneath the screen. I love the fact you can change the color temperature, obviously you can change the brightness, but it's also got an ambient room sensor so it can automatically change the brightness and temperature for you. On that desk as well, I also have my Iquinix F96 keyboard, which is my favorite mechanical keyboard of all time. There's also a Govi, I think that's how you pronounce it, Govi desk lamp. They sent me this just to check out. It's, um, it's interesting, it's a little lamp. It's not on at the moment actually, but it's a lamp that you can just turn on and change colors and it can react to music. A little bit gimmicky, to be fair, but it's it can create quite a nice background light occasionally. And I think the idea with it is that you can put it on your desk or either on your bedside table. The other thing I have on here is a walnut case, which was sent to me. I genuinely cannot remember when I found it recently, but some very kind company sent it to me. And I've started using it just to bung all the stuff that I tend to carry around with me in. So things like chargers, those editing sand disk drives that I mentioned a moment ago, all the little bits and bobs that I used to just lob into my rucksack and used to take up loads of space. Onto the A-roll set, which is where I'm sat now. This is where I do all of this kind of filming. I'm not overly happy with it yet. It needs lots of tweaking. There's a few things I've got to do, but it's, it's getting there. First thing to mention is this desk, which again is from, yeah, you guessed it, Ikea. It's an Ikea top. IKEA legs, not very expensive at all. I wouldn't recommend getting this color. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's this kind of, it's almost like a chalkboard, because no matter what you do, you can just put your hands on it and it will mark it. You can rub the marks off, but it tends to kind of like mark. It's very strange. It looks nice when it's clean, but I'm cleaning it all the time, so it's a bit of a pain. But it's mainly meant for me sitting here, putting my hands on, so that's fine. Uh, you may have noticed that I have something here, which is a Zoom L12 mixer slash audio interface. And I use this to record the eight or 16 podcast with my co-host Rob, link in description. It's a very, very good mixer. It has 12 channels of audio, all of which can be fed into your logic or whatever you tend to use as individual channels so you can treat them separately. It's got very nice internals, so everything sounds very nice when you put it through. And it's just a lovely piece of kit. Now going into that, I have a Samson, I always have to look this up, Samson Q2U mic, which is a either a USB or a normal XLR connected mic, and for about 70 or 80 pounds, it sounds fantastic, I think. That is attached to a fairly cheap monitor arm, and I do have, to monitor myself during podcasts, these incredibly old KRK monitor headphones, which I love to death. They are an absolute state. I'll show you now, they, they're all kind of falling apart, all of the foam stuff needs to be replaced. But they're still quite comfy actually, and they still sound great, that's the big thing. Now sticking with the audio side of things very quickly, for videos, I talk as I am now into a Rode NTG1, a superb mic, not cheap, but it's quite good in terms of a mid-level mid shotgun mic. That sits on a newer C-stand, which is a bit of a concoction, lots of different things I've added to it just to make it work, but it's pretty stable. And that's all fed into a Zoom H4n Pro recorder, which is just over here. People often comment about the audio quality on this channel. It's not great at the moment because of the room, but I'll get to that later. But in terms of the actual processing and the hardware I use, 
that is that. The processing all takes place in Logic. I've talked about this in the past. I will link above to a video I did on how I get this mic sound. And in terms of video, I have right in front of me a Sony FX3. It sits within their cinema line. It's not really a cinema camera. It's pushing it a little bit saying that. It's basically a full frame, semi DSLR video camera. And it's got amazing autofocus. It tracks my eyes so no matter where I am, it keeps me in focus, it's fantastic. It's paired with a 24 millimeter G Master 1.4 lens, which again, wasn't cheap, but is an absolutely superb lens. I also have a ProMist black filter on there as well, which I'll link to in the description. That gives the whole image a little bit of a, not a dreamy quality, that's the wrong word, but it softens the image slightly, so you can occasionally see that in, in lights and things. Now the FX3 sits on a Viltrox tripod, which I'm a big fan of. It wasn't very expensive, I've had it for a long time, I've used it for lots of videography client work, and it just helps me get very smooth B-roll, it's very stable, it's got a very nice smooth action if you're panning or tilting, whatever you're doing with it, highly recommend it. In terms of lighting, I have my big key light here, which is the Aperture Amaran 100D. It's one of their more entry-level lights, but it works fantastically for this size space. It's paired with one of their light domes as well, which is very good. And it's the best lighting I've had for the channel. Originally, I was using a ring light, which did a good job, but it wasn't particularly soft. This has been a bigger investment, but immediately the image quality is better. You will have noticed a few of my videos have been slightly overexposed. That's through me not really knowing how to use all this stuff properly, but I'm getting there. Now, going back to the sound quickly, uh, behind you, there are two great big producer's choice acoustic blankets. If that's not true, there's four. There's one on either side. Now, these are brilliant. They are made basically for blocking sound out a little bit, but also stopping reflection. So stopping my voice bouncing off the walls in this room. Now, I needed to find something to put these blankets on. And thankfully, I found a frame on Amazon, which I think is intended for green screen use normally. But basically, it was the right height, right width. You can change the width and height, actually for these blankets. So all I've done is take some very heavy duty clamps and clamp a blanket on either side of the frame, two lots of frames, done. So then when I'm filming, I bring them over here, put them in place, it blocks out some of the road noise, I have more plans with that, but it also stops those reflections, so it deadens the sound a little bit. Again, they're not cheap, but they are designed specifically for acoustics, and you can tell, trust me, as soon as they're in the room, they make a difference. And in terms of what's behind me, I have, yes, Ikea bookshelves and things here, with some stuff on, some kind of incidental background lighting, which needs to be improved. On top, I have an Edifier, ed edif Edifer, I can't never pronounce them, D12 speaker, which is a Bluetooth speaker. It's very good. At the moment, I've got that paired via Bluetooth with the Mac Mini, so I can play Apple Music, Spotify, the radio, whatever through it. Sounds fantastic, this thing. They sent me it to try out. I very much recommend it. I'll put a link in the description. To the right of that, I have an AirPods Max stand, which I think is supposed to keep it in low power mode, but it's a lovely little stand. I'll dig out the details and put a link in there, and it just looks quite nice as well. Behind me, I have just another Ikea stand type thing with a light on it, some Gorilla Pods and little mini tripods and things that I've used. In fact, this tripod is the tripod, it's another thing that means a lot to me, is the tripod that I use to film most of those 80 videos. The FX3 would sit, or my older camera would sit on this, on the desk because I didn't have room to have a tripod anywhere else. So I needed something small. And again, newer, there's no need to spend a fortune on camera gear, just get newer stuff. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this just sat on the desk basically, and it's a really good little tripod, highly recommended. And then I've got like a tray thing here, which is just full of stuff really. So full of things that I use, whether it be mics or headphones or clamps or cables, just stuff that I need to hand is just in there. There was so much to cover yesterday. I knew I'd forget something, and I did. I've just been editing the video, and I realized I didn't talk about this. This is a wonderful piece of artwork that was sent to me by a company called Grid, and it's basically a disassembled iPhone 4S. I've wanted one of these for a long time. Grid very kindly got in touch without me even asking them to, and sent me one just to put on the wall in the studio. And it's the first piece of artwork I have in this studio. There's nothing else in here at all at the moment and I think it's quite a nice thing to put up for, for starters, really. And I love it. You can see all of the parts that are in the iPhone 4S. They're all labelled up. There's measurements. And it really is lovely. I just, I love this kind of thing. I might get more of these, actually. I, I really like this disassembled, broken-apart iPhone-type art thing. I'm not really into art, so this is, this is me. This works for me. But yeah, I'll put the link in the description. Go and check them out.
Now lastly, the gear cabinet. This was very important because it was gonna house the expensive kit that I used to run this channel. So I went to Ikea again and found one with a lockable drawer, which works really well. It's also got some shelves above for other crap that I put on there, but the meat of the stuff is in that cabinet. So the first camera in there is the Sony FX3, which I've talked about already. But there's also the Sony A7S II. Now that is a camera that I used to film probably most of those 80 initial videos on for this channel. It's a dreadful camera for doing this kind of thing on your own because it has no decent autofocus. It has a 25 minute, I think, recording limit. It wasn't the easiest thing to use, but again, it means a lot to me because I filmed a lot of stuff with that camera. And occasionally I use it. So have you ever seen me do a video where I'm talking like this, but I also have an unboxing or something happening. Generally speaking, my B camera is the a7S II. There's also a Canon 5D Mark III in there, which is my favorite DSLR of all time. So pretty much any photography you see for the thumbnails or for my blog, happens on that 5D Mark III. There's also a Canon 7D in there, which I've never used for this channel, but it's a, it's one of my first DSLRs. So again, it means quite a lot to me. Now, the lenses of note in that cabinet. The first one is that G Master Sony F1.4, which is in front of me at the moment. There's also a Canon 24 to 70 F 2.8 L lens in there. I think 95, 96% of the B-roll that I shoot happens on that lens. There's also a Canon 70 to 40 millimeter F 4 L, which is a lovely lens, not particularly fast, but it's great for wider shots. There's also a great big Sigma 70 to 200 2.8, which is a lovely lens. I very rarely use it these days. I've never used it for this channel. It's always been for client work and that sort of stuff, but it's a nice alternative to the very expensive Canon L series one. There's also a Sony 50 mil in there, and I think a Canon 70 to 200 F4, which is a nice lens, but again, I don't tend to use it very much. And lastly, I've got a Manfrotto 190, which I use purely for photos, but it's such a good tripod. Lots of people use it. A lot of people use it for video as well. I just use it for stills personally, but the build quality of it, everything about that tripod is absolutely superb. So what we've got left to do? Well, first thing is soundproofing these windows. So these windows here, let in an awful lot of noise. That is a big issue. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's been cars coming past all day. I need to do more sound deadening as well. As great as these producer's choice acoustic blankets are, they're not enough. I need to get rid of some of the reflections on the walls and potentially on the ceiling as well. I'm gonna do some more stuff with the lighting. There's probably gonna be a TV on the wall at some stage, but I'm gonna do things in stages. I'm not gonna throw everything into this at once. I've got everything into a point now where I can film happily and bar the sound and make decent videos from this space. And that was the first goal really. But it will look different in a few months time. And when that happens, obviously I will give you an updated studio tour. I really hope you've enjoyed that guys. Sorry it was a bit of a long video. And if you've got this far, thank you so much for sticking with it. Remember to check out the links in the description for anything that caught your eye. And if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video that I did recently where I revisited Apple Music Lossless, Dolby Atmos and Spatial Audio. Because over the last few months, I've been doing a lot of listening to that stuff and I've got a few thoughts. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.